Welcome to this studio tour, my multi-purpose studio. I haven't done a tour here in a while and I've been asked a million times about all of the different stuff that I'm using. So I'm going to give you a very detailed tour of this studio that I use and all of the stuff that I use. So it's going to be a long one. If you are completely new on the channel, welcome and please consider subscribing. I'm getting very close to that 100K. It would be cool to see that pretty soon. Okay, so this is basically storage place. I have a lot of guitar cases. Some guitars are in the cases. A lot of stands and tripods for camera stuff. A lot of camera stuff really on this wall. Lenses, some cases some modifiers for light. I don't use all of this video stuff in the studio necessarily, but I do videography stuff in the city freelance. So that's why I have so many things. And we are also going to see that when it comes to cameras. I'm not only using stuff here on YouTube in my studio. One thing that is a bit more interesting is my drum kit. I think I bought this around two years ago. I had this goal where I wanted to learn how to play drums really fast and become awesome. That didn't happen so far, uh, but I still enjoy having the drums here. I sometimes use them to record drums. It takes a long time to record drums when you can't play drums, makes sense, but yeah. At the moment, it's not in good shape and I need to get a drummer here and help me tune the drums and set it up properly again because it's not really working right now. Maybe that's why I'm not good at drumming yet. Food stuff and coffee making things over there. And let's do the guitar wall. It's a bit random if the guitars are on this wall or in the guitar stand or in cases. I even have some in storage but these are currently the ones that I'm using the most. And that is my Ibanez Musician, my Fano PX6, which has been on this channel for many years. Uh, the Strat that everyone loves. Everyone loves my Relic. Um, what is it called again? Tequila Sunrise Strat. Um, my ES335, currently with flat wound strings. I did a video couple of weeks back trying to replicate the sounds on the new The Beatles documentary. It's not that new anymore, but I did a video on that. We have my gray guitars, Tele, and my Eastwood GP Ultra. I really don't like how the walls are looking. Uh, I wish that I could paint them. I don't think I can do that. I'm renting the place. It's really made for bands to rehearse in. Most of the similar rooms in this building is used to rehearse in. Uh, but I might need to look into that because I'm, I'm filming here. I want to make stuff look good and those walls aren't looking that good, honestly. Okay, let's do the other wall. I need to casually sit here to be in the shot. So these are the amps and cabinets that I'm using right now. I also have a few being repaired and some in storage. Uh, this is my barefaced Uprising 212, my favorite cabinet ever. It's just the best. I use this with most of my amps, even though some of them are combos. Most of the stuff is um, going through the barefaced cab. This is my Victory Copper Deluxe that I just did a demo of, a review. It's a great Vox type of amplifier. Sounds just like a box. It's fantastic. And that is sitting on top of some cabinets, speakers from PV that I got with a PV head that is not here now because it's being repaired. So you might see these later on my channel. Since you are asking, it's very comfortable to stand like this and talk. Over there we have my Tone King Sky King that I just got. Fantastic amplifier. I need to do a demo of that one as well. Reminds me of the um, Tone King that I used on my channel for many years, the Imperial. Reminds me of that, but it sounds even better, I think. And that one is standing on top of an Ampeg VT40 that I did a video of not that long ago. It's that Queens of the Stone Age thing that you probably know that I like to dig into. 
So that's amp stuff. And then we have some footwear. We have some more guitars. That baritone is not mine, but the basses are. And those guitars are mine. We have a mono pedal board right here that I often use in videos. I keep that close to the amp so I can use it very easily and I can take off and put on new pedals very easily as well. This is my new Gibson J35 acoustic guitar that I got recently after my FERC uh, acoustic guitar died and it was a production error and they didn't want to help me fix that so I had to buy a new one. That one is great. I haven't played it that much yet. Oh, shut up Siri. And on this shelf we have some pedals on top. We have some Ernie Ball strings. I'm trying to point there. We have my Mamiya, Mamma Mia medium format camera and we have some film stock for that. We have a lot of crap for cameras. We have some microphones and some more pedals. We have tools and cables and we have some microphones and stuff. I also have a lot of cables up there which is kind of tidy and also kind of tidy is all of these cables. Okay, it's not that tidy. And by the way, we have one more guitar hiding over here, which is my Troy Van Leuven Jazzmaster. And over here, we have my baby, my Ari Amira camera. So this is my main camera and the lenses that I most often use, at least. They are Nightcore Superior Primes. I have a set of five of them. Uh, again, this is not stuff that you buy to use as a YouTuber, mainly. I, I do use it on YouTube, not all the time, but very often since I have it. But I mostly use that for client stuff and freelance stuff that I do in the area. It's a beast of a camera. It's more than good enough for YouTube, but uh, yeah, I can really justify owning this camera and only to use it as a YouTuber. That would be crazy. And I also rent it out. I rent it out a lot. So it's sort of an investment for me as a filmmaker. And ironically, such an expensive camera doesn't have autofocus. So I'm using this wireless thing to focus uh, the camera when I'm filming myself. And I also use this when I'm filming clients and I have a focus puller yeah, it's overkill in here, but it's fun and I love it. Yeah, and this is sort of my backup to that, a Blackmagic Pocket 6K. Sometimes it's a B cam for this, sometimes it's my A cam here in the studio because it's a bit more easy to operate when it's just me and it's not that heavy. So um, these two are the cameras that I use the most and Sometimes I use this camera, a Sony a7 III. I mostly use this for photography, but sometimes I do video stuff on it because it's the only camera that I have that has autofocus, automatic focusly, yes. And this is uh, the control room, if you can call it that. I really wish that I could separate that room from this room, but that's not possible, I think. Most of the time it's fine to have them in the same space, but sometimes, or often actually, when I record guitars, it's of course good to have a wall between you and a very loud Ampeg amp, for example. Again, if you have been on the channel for a while, you know that I went away from using Macs, at least for video use. I still have a MacBook Pro, the M1, 13 inch I believe that I use for audio stuff because I'm so used to using Logic. It was difficult to move away from that and even though I have a stationary PC now it's good to have something that I can use when I'm traveling and when I'm at home and stuff so I have the MacBook Pro. This one with Paw Patrol stickers. That one is also good enough to do some video editing on, but I use the PC mostly for video editing and color grading. So I have this setup right here with two monitors. 
I do the editing, of course, and color grading. I do some remote color grading for other clients. I do all of my editing for video stuff that isn't YouTube on this powerhouse of a machine. I'm really happy with how it works and the fact that I'm able to swap out parts when I need to do that. I really don't like to use like the PC stuff for the interface, how Windows 10, I think I have 10, how that works, but mainly I'm just opening DaVinci Resolve and that's it. I don't try to go into any like settings or stuff, I just use Resolve. I have this Blackmagic control panel that I use for color grading that I just got, which is fantastic. My main speakers are from Dyn Audio, Lead 7s, and I have some Fluid Audio. I think they are called F5s. I use those two for the PC and the Dyn Audio ones for mixing with my laptop. Yeah. I use an Audient ID44 audio interface because I recently discovered that I need more than two inputs. I have been using the Fluid Audio SRI2. I use that on the PC now, uh, but I use the ID44 on the Mac stuff. And it's great, except that the audio is really out of sync from all other units that I use. I don't know if that's specifically an issue with my unit or, or all ID44 uh, interfaces uh, and it's something that I'm able to work around but still it's quite annoying. And I still have a Two Notes Torpedo Live that I use sometimes when I need everything to be a bit more quiet. But most of the time I use mics and I forgot to show you the mics. First one Lewitt Audio MTP 440, sort of like an SM57. I use that quite a lot. And a Bayer Dynamic M160, a Rebben microphone. I don't use that too much anymore, but still it's a great microphone. This is the one that I use the most. Uh, I did a video on this and ribbon mics in general. And this is the Audio-Technica AT4081 ribbon microphone. It's a fantastic mic for guitar recording stuff. And we have another one from Audio-Technica, the AT2040. I believe this is a dynamic mic. I use this for talking, sort of like a podcast mic, sort of like an SM7B. I want to talk about lights because I use a couple of these. <laughs> They are the Nanlite Pavo tubes and they are good, but not great. I wish that I had some better ones, but they are quite expensive if you want to get the real deal. I can get most of the stuff that I want from these, uh, but they are quite sensitive to like touching and all of a sudden you're going full cop car when you don't want to be in that mode. <laughs> That's really annoying. And they are not getting those dark saturated colors that I want, often want at least, but they are quite okay. And my main light, which is over there, over there, is a P300 from Aperture and that one is great. It's a big LED light just got that one. I'm also using a Aperture 300D. Uh, that one is in the storage place over there right now because I don't need two of the bigger ones at the same time. At least not in here, but I often do that when I'm out filming on sets. And I also have some smaller LEDs when I need that. And that should be everything of interest. Again, standing like an idiot to be in the frame. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I promise you to answer every single one of them, no matter how stupid they are. I promise you. And please help me get to 100k subscribers. I really want to get to 100k so I can brag about that. So thank you for helping me with that, if you do help me. And thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.